production range. But when we look at your capacity in a different range that we require, that would work well for you. Provide a list of your locations, your warehousing or service depots, or then what we call your geographic span. Most private companies or some of, uh, some of our multinationals who are anchored in Nairobi possibly have um, satellite offices or plants across the region, in Uganda, Tanzania, or Rwanda, Burundi, and so on and so forth. If you showcase your geographic span, it's very likely that if you did a good job or you're doing a good job in this country and we have offices in this other country, you can easily be rolled over. So that works well for you. And that comes from the preliminary screening. You are showcasing what you can do. Always attach your company organizational chart. Your organogram is very critical because from it we're able to see who is where, how many staff do you have the capacity to execute, to supervise and deliver either a service or goods that are required. I'll move over to agreements, and these are non-disclosure agreements to start with. Non-disclosure agreements essentially are for those sensitive uh, proposals or sensitive uh, works or jobs. And mostly these are not advertised. They could be individually sourced uh, to specific organizations based on your capacity. So what will happen, this agreement will first be issued to you before you get um, your, your terms of, of tender or quotation. So make sure you go through this and go through it very well because uh, a few companies have had issues because of these uh, NDAs. And you will have an issue because if you disclosed a section or samples of what has been issued to you confidentially, for example, if uh, a manufacturing company is planning to launch a new product and they, they engaged you in making one of their uh, promotional materials, Prior to uh, launch, you go ahead and uh, give one of your staff to wear. And their competition possibly says that they, uh, this company is launching a new product. That will bring, uh, will give you a bad eye. And you may end up uh, either in court or in, uh, or in dispute. Now, while tendering, you will receive the various tender documents, and some companies will include a contract template document together with the tender documents. I know many, uh, many people who respond to tenders are either in marketing or sales or in business development. And they hardly go through these templates. So you should be asking yourself why are these people attaching this contract template together with the tender? This is meant to forewarn you that this is how we are going to be trading. This is how we're going to be transacting. These will be the terms of engagement. If you do not agree or if you're uncomfortable with these terms, you will better off bolt as early as this stage you don't proceed. However, if you're concerned with that tender uh, complete, uh, sorry, template, it is wise that at that stage, you contact the procurement people or the contact people who are indicated on that tender. 
seek clarity about the elements of that template. It is assumed that by returning the tender documents, you are in agreement with that, tender, uh, with that uh, contract template because eventually that is what you are going to sign off. So please take note of that. Most companies will attach this template to forestall and also to speed up the eventual uh, bidding process and the award process. Because if you're okay with the tender uh, contract template, it therefore follows that on the next step of negotiation and, ten and, and tender awards, it's going to be easy. You will be negotiating about the, uh, the contract clauses and so on and so forth. Okay. Third party subcontractors. When you send through your proposal, it's prudent and very important for you to disclose if you are going to be using or working with third party subcontractors. That if you're going to be awarded this job, are you going to be subcontracting part of it or most of it? Or all of it that needs to be very clear and when you indicate that indeed you're going to work with third party contractors make sure you also then showcase the process you go through to select your third party contractors for the various work that they're going to, to work uh, on, on on this specific job that you're going to be bidding for you need to showcase how you negotiate, how you, how you take your pricing process. Your pricing with your contractors is very important to avoid the uh, cases of uh, the company feeling disenfranchised or taking advantage of. Always indicate that your pricing your quota prices with the third party contractor is very competitive. You take through, you take your, your subcontractor through a competitive sourcing process. Indicate also that you have signed agreements with subcontractors and are willing to share these agreements where necessary. So why is this uh, important? This gives the company an assurance that indeed the delivery of service or goods is going to go on uninterrupted. You won't, you won't be going, you'll be having disputes with your third party contractors. Okay. Compensation. How do we pay you? Very, very critical. And this is somewhere that uh, in many cases uh, at the point of negotiation uh, during the contract award stage that people tend to part. Why? Uh, five minutes left. Because, yes. Five more minutes. Five minutes? Five more minutes, yes. So you can begin wrapping oh, up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, okay. So we need to be cognizant, but private companies are cost sensitive. You need to showcase how you are arriving at your costs. You need to have a window for a, a cost breakdown that showcases either, um, and be easy to, to, to show whether you are uh, you're doing direct costing plus margin or profit, or you're doing direct costs plus your administrative overhead plus margin or you're doing a lump sum. So there is, um, in many cases, uh, procurement people will not prefer any lump sum charge. So be ready to have an open book uh, policy where possible. But having these will always work to your advantage because you will score a point that will be open to discussions to showcase uh, your cost, uh, cost buildup. And therefore, you also need to showcase that you have a cost control uh, mechanism at the back of your production areas. 
governance. Governance uh, for policy and business ethics, very, very critical uh, to the private sector and also uh, very important to multinationals that are operating within uh, our region. Always indicate a statement of your employment policy, which includes uh, fair play, equal opportunities, standards, and working conditions, your staff working conditions, very, very critical. Indicate whether your company position on employee discrimination and child labor laws exist. You need to have a, st uh, a policy statement regarding these. Now, child labor, when it comes to many multinationals, is a very critical element and some companies can be sued in their mother countries if it's detected that they are using child labor where they're operating overseas. So when you're bidding to, sending a bid to a multinational, take note of that. Always indicate your policy regarding uh, business ethics and to show that your staff are well versed and they comply with the, with the laws and also contractual obligations that you comply with the uh, contractual obligations. Indicate that you have a written policy or even, and also attach a written policy or guidelines on, on uh, employment, uh, employment policy and business ethics. Also provide a corruption and bribery practices uh, policy document. Very, very critical to show that you won't be compromising procurement staff or any other company staff that you'd be interacting with. Health and safety, I think uh, the previous speaker spoke at length about uh, health and safety and environment. So take note that uh, most private companies are very sensitive on this uh, area. Make sure you attach and showcase. So depending on which company you are working with, you need to be very strong. If you're going to bid for transport services for a company that is sensitive to health and safety, you need to come out very clear that you are you have a, a lot of respect for your staff health, security, safety, and environment. So the kind of vehicles uh, you purchase are environmentally friendly and so on and so forth. Make sure you provide those uh, policies. Ensure that uh, all your employees uh, attend regular toolbox meetings to keep them aware, continuously aware about uh, uh, these areas on, on, on health and safety and environment. You should be able to showcase that you keep a record of your safety statistics. And you were talking about uh, either death or lost time injuries, medical cases, treatments, and so on and so forth. Showcase that you conduct safety audits in your own operations. Showcase that you conduct safety audits at your sub with, uh, with your subcontractors, the people you subcontract, that they also comply to what you subscribe to. So procurement individuals tend to avoid, or companies tend to avoid individuals who have received any enforcing authority enforcement notices or prosecutions from people like NEMA. If you've been uh, shut down or you've been required to shut down for one or two reasons regarding this area, you may be a party for private companies. Financial details. Very critical, you need to showcase um, that you have the stamina, that you have the financial muscle to service the tender or the bids or the proposal that you intend to execute. So showcase uh, your, 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 your audited accounts, your annual turnover, your current assets, or fixed assets, long-term liabilities, if you have any, uh, contingent liabilities, if you have any. Showcase that you have insurance documentation covering your employees and employer's liability. Uh, public and product liability, contract workers, and materials insurance, just in case. 
a need to showcase our proof that your company is financially capable of delivering goods and services as a result of these financial details. Procedures. Very important to show that uh, you, have, you have a quality management system in place, that you have a quality assurance. For those who are in the uh, in manufacturing industry, you may need to show that you indeed you even have a, a quality lab, quality control uh, measures in place. You are able to manage uh, quality. Experience, I think uh, also this was uh, mentioned. But you need to showcase your experience uh, by indicating the number of years you've been in operations in the specific area of interest. Indicate, showcase your, your settings, your workshop setup, or your offices, or your manufacturing units, that you have the, the right machinery, the right equipment, the right staff. And also list down the major contracts or clients indicating the value of uh, contracts that you're executing or you've executed in the past successfully. Now, take note that these may need to be referenced. Supply chain uh, professionals tend to go back and confirm the experience you left behind on these areas. So they may pick the, 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 the largest value that you indicated and contact. They'll contact that uh, client, even if you did not list them as part of, of your preferred reference uh, client. Now, risk management. This is very critical in the private sector because uh, we want to see that are you foreseeing and mitigating possible risks in the supply chain, in the wider supply chain? Are you foreseeing, are you mapping every single possible risk and you have a mitigation and escalation uh, process? Do you have a risk management team within your organization that is going to address these risks? How will you handle them? What measures do you have in place? Now, risks, uh, for example, the COVID-19 that we are currently experiencing would possibly lie into, uh, belong in that register. Suppose there's an epidemic, a natural calamity, and your supply chain routes are cut. Do you have a fallback measure? Do we have to, uh, do, do you import 100% of your raw materials, for example, from China? And if, if so, if China cl uh, closes or collapses, what fallback measure do you have? Do you have an alternative? Those are come, uh, some of uh, the, the mitigation measures that we expect to see from you. So that we do not see or encounter possibilities of non-delivery or delayed delivery. The modern procurement uh, or supply chain professional focuses more on value. I remember the, the previous speaker also mentioned about this. We really don't focus so much on cost. Modern procurement is not cost-based, but value-based. So focus more on quality delivery, focus more on providing an alternative solution besides what we're asking for in terms of our specifications and so on and so forth. Are you able to prescribe something better? You can tell us, you see, these are the laptops you ordered, but we have these new ones in the market that are superior to these, but nearly of similar value, you can also consider. So we want to see more innovative propositions are, uh, coming from our, our partners. All right, I've heard it through most of our stuff. I usually speak a lot, but because of time, uh, I will leave it there. If you have uh, questions, I believe I will have a, a Q&A, and I've left my contacts uh, there. In the event that you want to engage a, a little bit more, you are free to do so. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Ezekiel. Thank you for the great insights. Um, I'll now hand it over to Joshua. Joshua, what hasn't been covered by the two that you feel um, we need to know around successful tendering? So I think in the interest of time, if you don't mind, we'll give you 10 minutes so that then we have time for Q&A. So Karibu sana, Joshua. I think you need to unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Joshua, you need to unmute yourself. We can see your presentation, but you need to unmute yourself. All right. Now? We can hear you and see your presentation. Great. Yeah, uh, very quickly, I... That's my name. I'm currently a procurement specialist at uh, East Africa Science and Technology Commission and also a regional procurement consultant. These are my contacts. We can share later. Uh, my two colleagues have uh, mostly concentrated on the you know, private procurement. I will concentrate on aspects of national uh, uh, public procurement. And the distinction here, unlike private sector where uh, bottom line cost reduction and cost avoidance and savings are the main drivers in private sector. In public sector is more, uh, more concerned about con uh, fairness, equit equitability, transparency as part the Procurement Act and also part the, uh, the Constitution of Kenya. Yeah, it's not mostly about cost savings and avoidance. So that is the distinction between private procurement and public procurement. Now, what are the business opportunities? That's what I'm, I'll concentrate on. Under uh, the Constitution and the Procurement Act, one of them is the 40% that uh, supply, sub, 40% of uh, contract supplies must be sourced locally from citizen contractors by a foreign firm which has won a tender, international tender. So that is in law. And that section you read uh, on yourself. So 40%, uh, my colleague talked about the uh, local content. So it must, uh, at least 40% must be uh, sourced locally. And then another 40% is uh, in the 2017 presidential directive of Build Kenya, uh, by Kenya, Build Kenya, that all the public procurement entities must reserve 40% of their procurement budget for locally produced goods. So that's a good opportunity. The other one is 20% margin of preference, which will be given in, during technical evaluation for citizen contractors when they are competing with other non-citizen contractors in national and international tenders. And citizen contractors means they must have 51% of shares. So, if that is the case, they'll be given 20% margin of preference. Another one is what my colleague has talked about, 30% of the uh, procurement budget in public procurement must be given to youth, women, and persons with disabilities it, who are Kenyan citizens, yeah? Not local citizens that are non-Kenyan, Kenyan citizens. They must, the farms must be 100% owned. And then another one is the national margin, margin of preference for the items made in Kenya in national and international tender. So if your items are proven to be made in Kenya, pure, not importation, then during the prices, the, uh, the other prices, we shall add 15% on top to be more expensive so that you win. That's what it means. And then number five is uh, the margin of preference given on prices again, according to the shareholding of the Kenyan citizens, again in national and international tenders. Number six, there's another, national, another margin of preference when a foreign contractor forms a JV or a subcontract with a citizen contractor. Again, they are entitled to that 10%. So when they do business with Kenyans. 
Then there's what we call exclusive preference for local contractors. That is where Kenyan citizens hold 50, more than 50% of shareholding, and you're living with motor vehicles, plant, and so on, assembled in Kenya. So this, again, is local content. And also for works, worth 1 billion, construction material, uh, transmission and conduct of electricity, and so on, those are the figures. 500 million for works, 100 million for goods, and 50 million for services. So this is in law and regulations. They should be given exclusively to citizen contractors. So if you see a tender, what this amounts uh, that is not given to citizen contractors, advertised, that is international and so on, you are entitled to go and ask the uh, procurement entity, why are you giving these tenders to foreigners and yet they are reserved for us? And uh, that, is not, uh, not, that is not equivalent of unbundling. There is a difference between unbundling and uh, splitting of contracts. When you are unbundling tenders to benefit Kenyans, you are not splitting the contracts. Now, Exclusive preference and reservation applies to micro, small, medium, and other disadvantaged groups. It's not only women, youth, and persons with disabilities. And this goes up to the county, sub-county, and constituency level. In the uh, constituency development fund, those tenders, county tenders, and so on. So uh, you should look for these opportunities. Uh, PEs now are required in law and legation to use framework contracts so that uh, uh, they don't keep uh, doing quotations and so we're wasting time. They do framework contracts for three years or two years, and then you are assured of business for that period of work, two or three years, if you perform well, because they will be doing annual, maybe quarterly, an annual performance uh, appraisal to determine whether you'll continue with the following year. So take advantage of this. And you can go and converse with the procurement agencies. These are public offices, pay them a visit and discuss these things with them. Now, there is a question uh, people are asking. Agpo firms are not required to have prior experience to bid. They are not supposed to. Even if you are registered yesterday and you have the certificate, you go and register. Registration is continuous. You, you are not supposed to have prior experience, but the staff you will deploy or you will consolidate or marshal for technical tenders, those will be required to have experience, but not the firm. That's the distinction. And then the draft regulation, if you look at 108 to 112, it provides for community participation in public procurement tenders. So you can mobilize yourself in communities and go and see the governor and uh, other public entities, and you'll be given tenders. Then the annual consolidated plans. Here in East Africa, and even in the African Union, if you go to the African Union uh, website, you will see the, their procurement plan is publicized. It is open because you are inviting public. So when you see it, you see the opportunities there, in, you prepare in advance. And I think uh, in Kenya and other countries, they should uh, adapt this best practice. You, they publicize their consolidated plans for people to see the opportunities they have. And then, of course, there is specially permitted uh, procurement procedure for strategic partnership sourcing, credit financing, and so on. When you have capacity and competence and your products are outstanding, you can go and discuss and be, uh, uh, and be given the opportunity to participate through specially permitted but your product must be especially outstanding for, for this specially permitted method to be allowed. It depends on your innovation and your creativity. Then direct sourcing, direct procurement and direct sourcing, again, for especially unique, exclusive, or cooperated products is allowed. Again, how innovative are you? Then there is another act of public-private partnership of 2013 and regulation of 2014. Here is another whole age of procurement under this act you can take advantage of. And then you're supposed to showcase your product using sectoral or association uh, trade fairs, business forums, expos, chambers of commerce, media, 
internet, have your website, if you can, uh, you know, manage to have one, directories, and so on. And you can also visit SME authority. Somebody has talked about small and medium enterprise authority. If you're not registered and you're in this category, kindly register with the SME authority, and they'll expose to, uh, to you uh, business opportunities, even online ministries, and so on. Now, it is good to look beyond the Kenyan borders to do business, to get procurement uh, opportunities. Kenya is a member of its African community, African Union, uh, Comesa, and so on. So look beyond uh, Kenyan border. So there are business opportunities, international public program. In, in East Africa community, there's community preference where anything beyond $50,000, we talk about, we trade in dollars in the East Africa community where I work. Anything $50,000 and below, it is given to suppliers from member states only. So I have given uh, the website of East Africa community there, for example, where you can uh, be checking the procurement opportunities there. You can consult uh, East Africa Business Council. Yeah, then there is what is called 50 million Africa Women Speak Network platform, which is bringing 50 million uh, African women to explore business opportunities. There is East Africa Development Bank, ETC. So kindly be checking some of these things in this website. Then there is Comesa. Kenya is a member of Comesa in many other countries where there's a 10% margin of preference yeah, for suppliers in the member states. And their framework contracts is up to two years. In South Africa community, there's also framework agreements, also one year or two years. So check out some of these opportunities. African Union, again, there's a margin of preference for suppliers with the, uh, from the, from the you know, member states. Ten, uh, but those are the conditions. You must be registered and so on and have majority share. And the, their framework contracts is normally three years, maximum of five years. And it can be renewable up to a maximum of another two years if you perform well. So take advantage of that also. World Bank, because there are very many projects World Bank uh, uh, does with the uh, countries. There's a 15% domestic preference. And then, uh, 7% 7, 7 for works and 15 for goods. So check out on that also. And then the affirm contract is five years, renewable for another two years. So check out, I've given the, the World Bank uh, website there. Then there's African Development Bank. They offer domestic preference of 15% on goods and services and 15 on construction. And regional conference, that is when they have invited international tender for the whole Africa. You'll get 10% and 7.5% regional conference. Their framework contract agreements is up to four uh, to two years. Now, what are, how can we finance your business in, in public procurement? Some of these are provided in law, bids and performance security and working capital from microfinance institutions, circles, there's SME fund. I don't know whether it's operationalized. You can ask the, the, the authority. Then there is UESO Youth and Women Enterprise Funds, which currently they are being merged to be Biashara Kenya funds. So don't say you don't have money to, to, to do business. When you are just as Agpo, you can go and discuss with them. And for Agpo firms, there is no bid board. It's a standard uh, securing declaration. And Performance security is up to 1%. When others are requested for 10%, for agro farms, they will be requested for 1% or it is waived altogether. Then there's invoice discounting with your financial uh, so that you get trade credit, cash credit, or overdrafts. You can uh, take advantage of that. It's provided in the regulations and the law. Then. P, uh, public entities are supposed to authentic notifications of your award and orders so that you take to these institutions and get credit. You don't have to wait until invoicing. 
once you win a, a, an award or an order, they authenticate it and you get uh, finances from your bank or from financial institution. Then there are advanced payments, some tenders uh, provide for advanced payment. Where you read a tender and you see it is not, uh, you know, providing for advanced payment, you can ask for clarification and they can do even do an addendum. Yeah, as long as it's done in good time. Then there is invoice factoring. Subcontracting is allowed. Somebody has asked about subcontracting, it's allowed. So if you don't have money and the tender, uh, you know, allows for subcontracting, subscribe to someone who has finances and, and you have a, an agreement. Then there is equipment and facility leasing. You don't have to have your own items. Agpo tenders are now providing for this. You don't have to have equipment and so on. Then bill of landing, operating leasing is where you hire even offices and equipment and, and uh, you know, office space and uh, office equipment to do your work, even consultancy. And then you pay something small for what you gain. And then there is installment credit. You talk to your supplier, yeah? He allows you to take the supplies and supply, and then you pay uh, little by little as you, are, you get paid. Now, um, much has been talked about how to prepare a winning tender. Uh, just to touch something small here. In public procurement, it's not about the lowest tender. It's not about the prices that are announced during tender opening, but it's the lowest evaluated, meaning there is an evaluation has to take place. Because some people complain that they did not win and they were the lowest. Of course, in the tender document, there is a requirement of preliminary technical and financial evaluation criteria. And the research that has been done is that 50% of bidders, they fail on preliminary. Then another 25 fail on technical. And only 25% make it to financial. Why do they feel, fail? Because they, they, they fail to read and understand the requirements, some of which are fairly easy to achieve. So as my colleague said, it is important to seek professional advice from procurement and other experts for a small fee, rather than to lose millions of shillings in tenders. If you, are, you don't have the companies, particularly agro farms, kindly seek professional advice from procurement uh, consultants, like uh, us in the, you know, uh, in this forum and others. So because such experts will be able to understand the bid document well, conceptualize with a checklist, they, they will ask for clarifications for you, they will even attend site visits and pre-bid conferences, they will do market survey so that you, the price you are quoting is in the, the market price and they consolidate a quality bid. Now, what are some of the uh, tactics? Uh, what are some of the practices you should avoid when you are doing public procurement or even uh, private tendering? These are some of them. Unethical or unlawful practices. Quoting above market price or abnormally low prices is not allowed. You can even be debarred or deregistered and be surcharged. So don't quote above, very much above market price or even below. Agro farms have got that weakness of quoting below, abnormally below uh, low prices for them to win the tender. And then when they get an order, they, they, they are not able to supply. Don't supply, don't provide expired documents. This is a big problem within public procurement. You know, you, you have expired tax conference certificate, expired uh, this and that, and you, you just attach it. These days, the, P, uh, the procurement uh, people are very keen. They will do due diligence. So you will be wasting your time. So don't attach, provide forged documents and ghost manpower. That's another big problem. You say you have an engineer, you have an accountant, you have a, this plant, and when the people go for due diligence, it is ghost manpower and ghost premises. That is fraud, and fraud is a crime and punishable by law in that section I've quoted there in public procurement. Then avoid public uh, conflict of interest. Again, this is punishable by law. If you know your wife or your son or your relative works in 
such organization and they have uh, advertised for a tender, keep off. Just tender where you don't have conflict of interest. Then avoid corruption, coercion, and all those things. And be the leaving, be suppression, be rotation where you agree with the, your colleagues. I will stand at this time, you avoid tendering. Or you, you tender, but you put a bigger price than me. So all those things are unethical and they are illegal. And they, if, the, if you are uh, discovered, you'll be punished. Avoid communication with evaluators. Yeah, don't push for, for, for winning and so on. Because that, that's unethical or influence. I'll talk to someone powerful to influence those who are evaluating tenders. So avoid such unethical practices. They will lead, you'll be, it is, they are criminal. You'll be surcharged, you'll be debarred for like three years. Now, what are the good things you can do to win tenders, for example? Jay, somebody has asked about joint ventures, partnership, consortium, subcontracting, to gather a credible team. That is encouraged. And if you read a tender that ha has no allowance for this, as I said, go and ask, visit the procurement uh, head and ask why are you not providing JV or partnership or consortium in this tender. And they will do an addendum because it's encouraged, particularly for agro firms. Maintain uh, professional literacy quality standard and certification. Make use of continuous registration opportunity. As I said, now registration is continuous in law, both for agpo and non-agpo. Make advantage, take advantage of that. You never know when the opportunity will strike. Uh, innovation, be innovation, innovative, aggressive marketing of new products and, and services and market trends. Ask for clarifications and respond to clarifications requests in good time. PEs always allow for clarification. And that is where if you ask and they see it makes sense, they will do an addendum. But don't be late. Ask them in good time once you buy the tender or you even see the tender in the website. Uh, comp uh, be, uh, be compliant with the applicable labor, employment, and all other rules and regulations because they are normally requested. Social security, national hospital, how you are taking care of your workers, environmental rules, and so on. Uh, file credible administrative appeals and complaints in good time. When you're not satisfied with the result of a tender, you have the right to complain. Uh, I will make appeal, but do it in a good time, within 14 days. Do market survey for market intelligence. Build a good uh, and maintain a good reputation on ethical buying and contract execution. If you are poor, if you are a poor record of in contract execution, then you stand a very low chance of winning public tenders or even private tenders. Ethical buying. This a, 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 a whole, uh, you know topic that may be organized later. Then meet and exceed specifications given, including alternative offers. Somebody talked about alternative offers. I know most public procurement tenders do not provide for alternative offers. But now in the law, there is what is called total cost of ownership as a method of tender evaluation. So when public entities will be applying that total cost of ownership methodology, then they cannot avoid alternative tenders because that's how alternative tenders will be considered. Then submit your bid in good time. Don't come in the last minute and, uh, and uh, start uh, be, uh, you know, pleading with the, those who are opening and your fellow bidders. Eh? Just accept my bid and so on. We have seen that practice. It's no longer you know, even uh, tenable. Then, Substitution, you are allowed to substitute or make modifications of the bid. That is, you are allowed. If you have left something and you feel it will enhance your winning chances, you are allowed to do modifications or substitution by bringing another envelope containing those substitution or modification. Yeah, you are allowed to do that, in, but in good time. Don't do that when, uh, in the, during the opening day. It will be rejected. Do it before the deadline. Then you have the right to peruse the bid document and ask for any clarification, as I said, even before, even if, even if you are not purchasing, you have the right to peruse 
the bid document and ask questions. Yeah, and uh, I think that is it. So, uh, thank you. Yes, yeah, yes. So, uh, some would require, you know, more sessions in the future. I think the, the Mr. will organize for that. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you very much uh, for the very comprehensive uh, presentation on um, public sector. I know uh, the time has gone. I can see we are still full house. Uh, we are going to go to Q and A. And uh, what we always say that at this point, the organizations are focused on keeping employees and the population, including the government, safe. But the ultimate well being of the population, of the employees, and of our colleagues is economic recovery, economic opportunities for businesses. And we would like to have businesses increase their chances and their winning rates of bids, be it in the private sector, in projects, in the humanitarian sector and in the public sector. And majority of the losses is on the documentation, is on the presentation, how you sell yourself. And for procurement people, it is the easiest thing to ignore uh, a badly presented tender. Now, if I want to go to one of the questions that we have here uh, from Andrew Ashene, it was asking to the panelists from your experience, uh, how can local farms benefit from tanky uh, public-private uh, partnership uh, opportunities such as JV? I've, uh, I've had uh, Joshua uh, mention that. Um, so Joshua, are you able just to expound on how comes the, in many projects, uh, especially in East Africa for government projects, we don't see many local businesses getting JV, uh, local content, PPP opportunities, and especially triple P, we have not seen any successful uh, projects so far or any successful of note. Could you, in one minute, uh, comment on that? Uh, thank you. Um, as I said, they should be uh, sharp and they should be on the lookout. There is a PPP secretariat in, in, in Treasury. Visit, there's a public office, go visit there. They have the whole list of what PPCs will be done next year, the following year, and so on. And then engage them because in, in, it is in the law now, they are supposed to have 40% of local content and it's a presidential directive. And then there is this 40%, if it's an international, you know, supplier contractor, he has to engage local suppliers that will supply 40% of the supply. So I think firstly is lack of information or lack of effort on such local contractors to engage. Go visit Treasury, visit the, the PEs, and ask them to accord these opportunities to you. That's what I would uh, say. And then organize yourself in terms of competence and skills, as I said, in JVs and cons consortiums. Go there and push for them. Don't just sit and wait. Great. Thank you very much. And PEs is procurement entities. So that's the organization that uh, advertise the tenders, the parastatals and the quasi parastatals. So um, Ezekiel, in the private sector, we normally don't see uh, tenders, uh, private procurement people, and which is probably the biggest spend in overall combined, do not advertise. They use Google most of the time. How, what will you advise in one minute, the businesses that have never done or do, are not even aware of where to get this business opportunity in the private sectors. What can they do? And when people go back to normal to work now, and even during this sort of break, they can be preparing and getting ready to get the businesses from the mighty Safaricom, EABL, BAT, Shell, Vivo, Total, and even the cooperatives and the NGOs in the UN and World Food Program. What will you give them as one, two, three tips for them to be able to achieve this? The feet. Uh, so, from my experience, I've awarded uh, contracts to individuals who simply walked in 
with a proposal. A proposal that showcases that indeed they understand our business and they see an area that we are struggling and they have a solution to that area. So what I will tell uh, my friends uh, out there who want to do business in the private sector. So if you walk to most of these uh, private companies, they do not have offices. We're sitting in an open plan uh, office, so you don't need to walk. I mean, you don't need to knock any door. Just prepare your proposal, understanding these specific company very well or their products very well and you've identified an area that you believe you have a solution or you you can partner with that company and work out a solution i can assure you whoever that you're going to speak to will give you the job to do great so so basically sure you understand this company very well ensure that you know where they're struggling or an area that they need help or an area that you are strong on and if you partner with them you're going to come up with a strong solution a solid solution if you walk even to the ceo of that company they will listen to you and most likely you will be the person doing that job great so in the private sector, uh, you advise the businesses from small to large to make unsolicited uh, proposals that, that shows value, value in cost or in cash or in better products, uh, uh, better delivery to the organization. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Now, uh, as on, on our last panelist, uh, um, Sylvia, local content sounds like um, a mirage uh, that is only achieved, uh, for example, in North, Northern Kenya for now, um, mm -hmm. and there are not enough projects for to showcase uh, what international tenders have been able to give to the local communities. Are there some cases that you can show us of organizations that have actually benefited from local content, and what did they do, and how did they get those opportunities? Yeah, so uh, there are a number of organizations that have really benefited in terms of local content. So uh, it's all about positioning and um, agreeing to for mentorship. So in the industry where I am, so one of the things is that there were no local suppliers who could do certain things. For instance, what we call an, a rig, a small rig just to do a certain job. But uh, there are right now organization in this country, two of them, that are now supplying what we call an over, overhead rig. And what they did is that they partnered, for instance, with Becker Hughes, which is an international company, and um, they went through a mentorship program. And over the time, they became competent, and now they have the contract. So another example is um, we were looking for a security company. We wanted to give a local contractor in northern Kenya, but there was none that had that capability. They didn't have the, the resources, the financial capability, so we put out a tender that was intentionally looking for a JV. So one of the evaluation criteria was, you must bring a partnership onto the table. You, and you must show us how that partnership is going to work. And in two years, you're going to be dropping off and uh, your subcontractor will now be doing the job. And we have success stories. In Turkana, we have contractors right now who are fully fledged organizations that are running on their two feet just because of that JV. Like, but if I go back to my initial um, comment, is that it's a collective responsibility. The minute all parties agree and put efforts behind it, it's doable. But the minute it's left into the main contractor to decide, of course, they're looking at their overheads, they're looking at their time, their spending and all that. Then they will look at it and say, this is an expensive uh, venture and they're not willing to do it. However, if all the parties come up and agree that this is something they're interested. So for my organization, for instance, local content was one of the very key thing in terms of how do we incorporate, even in our tenders, we ask for provide a local content plan. How many Kenyans are you going to employ? How many goods and services are you going to procure from Kenyans? 
how many um, companies are you going to subcontract to? So it's, it's very intentional, but it's doable. Thank you very much. Uh, at this juncture, I will, I will, um, we're going to close, but I would like to get the panelists from Joshua, followed by Ezekiel and then Sylvia, to just give the businesses and the procurement professionals, the SMEs, the large ones in this webinar, their last words, their last wisdom uh, on way forward for them and how to increase their winning rates and opportunities. Joshua. Thank you. Uh, as I said, be on the lookout. Ensure you have the you know, required uh, skills and competences. If you don't have form JVs and uh, you know, uh, consortiums, then go look for these opportunities. As I said, in the, in, the, in the organization's website, both in Kenya and international, as I've said, and then visit the public entities offices. It is your right. 30% uh, and 40% uh, and uh, all this margin of preferences is your right. Go visit them. If they don't provide, challenge them. And if they don't, uh, you know, if they are hesitant, you can complain to, you know, public procurement legislative authority or even the office of the president and so on. Because it's the president who did the, the, the order for Bill, by Kenya, Bill Kenya. And it's, it's a must, it's in their performance contracting. So be on the lookout, go for those opportunities. They belong to you. Thank you. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, are you there? You yes, yes, out? I'm here. Your last uh, word. So, what, what, what I will tell uh, my friends again, the private sector is very easy to work with. And I believe uh, if, uh, for example, for SMEs, that's the area you need to focus on to grow your uh, capital, because uh, the, payment, the payment terms are a bit uh, flexible. As uh, my friend Joshua said about uh, 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 financing, various companies nowadays have uh, entered agreements with various banks, and they have what we call invoice discounting where if you supply something you are able to take the invoices to the bank and they'll pay you at a small fee to keep your finances uh, going so take advantage of that uh, don't fear these multinationals walk in but walk in with a healthy proposal a proposal that addresses their needs we do not have a uh, an incident of one size fits all in the, in the private sector. You need to prepare a specific proposal for a specific individual company. Don't do a generic uh, proposal and take it to EABL or take it to Coca-Cola and think uh, that will, uh, will serve either of them. Identify an area where you need to work on and focus on that and make a proposal on that and you'll be surprised. Thank you very much, Ezekiel. And last but not least, Sylvia. Okay, so for me, I think um, one of the advice that I leave uh, with you guys is quality delivery. Uh, you'll find that some people, most of the time, companies don't want to keep tendering and keep going back to the drawing board, but they will always have at the back of their mind that one contractor or that one supplier who delivered beyond the expectation. So once you've, award, you've been awarded, because I think sometimes people put a lot of effort in what I call a pre-award. So you do a lot of very good work, you submit very good papers, you are financially healthy, but when it comes to the execution of the task itself, it is done so poorly that next time, even if there was just an, an additional scope to the scope that you are doing, nobody will think about you because of how you deliver that scope. So quality, on how you, you, um, you manage the scope that you've been given because 90% of the work is in post-contract award. Only 20% is in the pre, yeah? Uh, the other thing I'll talk about is being specialized. Be, be good at something. So one thing that I worry so much is when I, someone says, oh, what can I deliver? And the question I ask, what do you deliver? Then someone says, anything, I can do anything. I find that very interesting because then 
you are not able to really speak about your competencies. You're not able to be confident about what you can deliver. It's okay to jump into opportunities. For instance, this COVID pandemic period, people have jumped into opportunities. Everyone right now is a supplier of mask or a, a thermometer. But at the end of the day, as an organization, have your core competency. What are you good at? And how can you position yourself with that good, um, uh, something that you are good at? So be uh, specialized. Don't be a jack of all trades and a master of none. My final words is, don't be scared to seek mentorship from big companies. If you're aspiring to become one of the biggest logistical uh, contractor in the country, for instance, look up to uh, the people like multiple holders, the big logistic companies, and just go and sit down with them and ask them, what did you do right? It, mentorship is something that you can never get over with. Just be humble and just seek for mentorship. Those are my three uh, advices. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for, for participating. Uh, we are here to support you to increase your winning rates. So in case you need support to be able to be ready for your tenders, get in touch. Uh, we will send you this presentation. We will also send you the video and our tender tendering deck that will help you to as a reference point on what you need to do. Uh, take a note of what the panelists have said in, in mentorship, in getting ready. What I can leave you with is do something I call pipeline development. Don't be surprised unless you don't know your business. You, you already know what you are doing, what you're specific on. So when you look at the public and the private sector and even the humanitarian sector, do a pipeline development. Check on the types of work, types of customers you'd like, map them out, types of contract you'd like. For example, in the public sector, even though people assume they're just gonna do tendering, they have framework agreements that can, be, can go for three years. So you don't have to worry about tendering and retendering and tendering. So check on those. And the first step in building your business pipeline is ensuring you have the qualification, the credential and resources to perform the work you want to pursue. In case of Agpo where the company does not need experience, make sure you have associates and teams that are able to support you to demonstrate that experience. In our case, you, we, if you want to get in touch with Sylvia or Ezekiel or Joshua and many much more that can help you, please free, feel free to email us on info at hop-global.com. Look out for our next webinars. Our, our aim is to impact you so that you can be able to go back in your business, in your workplaces, and be resourceful and result, create results and increase your bidding rate to at least 85% of all the proposal you put. Have a good night. Have a wonderful weekend. And God bless you all. Thank you all. Have a good evening. God bless. Thank you. Bye.